I did a tweet saying, I was thinking of creating an open source roadmap. It's something I get asked a lot. And I've never been a real fan of roadmaps because I think people follow them too kind of too focused, too rigid, and people should find their own paths. But then I also thought on the flip side that it's important to for people to have a bit of a guide. So I started creating some notes on a GitHub project board. I started putting down kind of like what I thought the outline would be, which is what the columns, kind of GitHub, the repo, contribute, Git, uh, reviewing other pull requests, becoming a maintainer. And then inside that, I kind of put in order what I thought was important. So at the beginning, I thought, right, right at the beginning, glossary, and then what is open source and why you should care and kind of following it through. And I've put this together and I'm really keen to go through it with you and to give you a little bit of a teaser what I did next. And then I started putting that information on a documentation page on the BioDrop app. And I thought these then could be clicked through to more details, but we'll get back to that. So this is what I've got so far. And I'd be interested to know what you think. And so many of you on Twitter really helped out. I mean, there's 135 comments and I really appreciate those comments. A lot of them were just supportive, which is super beneficial, but also a lot of them kind of made suggestions and said, do this, don't do that. I know some people said, our oh, roadmaps aren't great. And I was part of that camp at one point, and I still am. I think it's finding a balance. So I don't wanna to be too like detailed, like I said, but you know, a glossary is super, super important branching, forking, conflicts. These are all really weird terminology. And so if we can start off by explaining that, I thought that was a really good idea. And then what is open source? Why should you care? Something that I think is also very important, how to find a project. There are so many ways to find a project and some of them are not so great and some of them are better. So I think that's also really important. And projects that I recommend, I thought it'd be interesting to include that as well. And that could be changed and kept up to date. And then what checks, what to look for, what due diligence to do when you find a project, you know, is it friendly? Is it welcoming? Is it a good place to get started to your contribution or to spend your time and effort? Read the contributing guideline. I want that to make that a really important kind of, I don't know, alert box or something because people don't read that. And there's lots of amazing gems in there. And this project doesn't have one then maybe it's not a project you want to contribute to because I think there'd be a lot of guessing. Or you could, you know, contribute that file to the project, which will take a bit of understanding of how the project does things. It's going to be hard work, but I'm sure the project will really appreciate it. So will other people who contribute afterwards. Common project improvements. Uh, there, I think there are certain things that every project, no matter what language, what technology it's doing, will benefit from these. So I thought I will definitely have a section of mentioning those. How to contribute with the GitHub UI. I think it's important people to get started by contributing just using the GitHub UI. Yes, there'll be a fork. Yes, there'll be a commit and branch and so forth, but it's click and point a little bit easier. So I thought we could kind of go through those stages. And then we could go on to Git, which I think is important for people who um, want to run the project locally and, and make those sorts of changes, probably more advanced changes that they actually want to check that they work. And I say Git, I don't say Git CLI because people could use a UI tool for that's fine, but it's still going to have the terms. You need to create a branch, then a commit, and then you're going to raise a pull request um, from your fork to the upstream repo. See, all these kind of strange terminology. And then I kind of I haven't continued making my notes yesterday a bit more work to do on this but I thought reviewing other people's pull requests is a great way to help with the project I think some people are so are so focused on must do code changes code changes code changes like pull requests commits pull requests commits and that's really hard for the maintainers and the author of the project to keep up whereas people could get their pull requests merged faster by helping other people get their pull requests merged and reviewed faster so by reviewing those that will help yours so that's really important and then going even further to being a maintainer and remember if you're not a maintainer on the project you can do everything exactly the same as everyone else as the maintainer on that project you can't just do i think it's like two things you can't close any issues or pull requests unless they're yours uh, you can't change labels on issues or pull requests either if it's yours or not and you can't merge or reject uh, a pull request but to be honest you can do everything else you can do 95 percent of what maintainers can do and I was playing with this kind of layout back and forth, like kind of, you know, for half the day today, you know, what should we do? Should we do a table, do one massive page? But then I thought, oh, that's quite a lot. I think breaking things down, like the courses that people take, they have like three or five minute videos and it's broken down. I think it's really important that people can complete a section and they know that they're going to come to step three tomorrow, for example. So I thought this was really, really good. And, you know, later on, we can maybe even save people's progress 
on the BioDrop app. This is a crazy idea that I'm throwing out there, but then people can kind of see what they've completed. They could tick it or something and then know that they're going to move on to the next stage. Maybe they can just remember. I think we'll keep it simple for now. But uh, the idea is that these become clickable. So at the first one, you click on it. We probably want a breadcrumb or something so people can find their way back quite easily. But this is just a terminology, kind of a really simple page. This is as far as I've got. So if you're expecting loads more pages done and not done yet, I will be doing this over the weekend. I'm quite excited to do the other sections, but I'm thinking some screenshots might be really helpful as well uh, with some arrows maybe some animated gifs we'll see where this goes but i'm keen to get this out there as soon as possible within the next few days because then people can contribute back to this and improve it i just want to kind of start the conversation i want all of you to get the green squares get the contribution and add you know your thoughts and your experience your perspective to um, this section this docs of BioDrop. I think this is such a great way because I'm also going to link to certain examples in our documentation where people can get started. I want to try each step to have actionable steps that people can take to level up. I think reading something, watching something is, is the first step, but for it to be really remembered, for people to really understand is they need to actually take the step themselves. So with BioDrop, we can get people to create their profile. We can get people to review other people's profiles. So again, giving them actionable steps. So any ideas you have on actionable steps will be super beneficial and I'd really appreciate it. That's it for this video, really. It's as far as I've got. Sorry, I haven't done any more. I think this doesn't even work in dark mode yet. Let me just check. Eh, no, it will fail accessibility. I need to make those improvements still. There's still uh, quite a bit to do and you're welcome to come and geek out with me on BioDrop. I'm working full time on this project. There's a link in the description below. Come and star the repo that really helps support and come and geek out with us. We're all learning together. Um, and I look forward to seeing you there. See you at Eddie Hub.